Now that you've heard about speciation of mercury, you're probably wondering about speciation of lead and the metallic form versus other forms, but I'm going to leave that to Dr. Merritt to talk about. You guys don't appreciate my dry sense of humor, huh? I'll try and be more direct. Okay, these are web resources I would like you to all seriously consider having on your desktop at all times. I think that they are extremely important. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry is a federal agency that is in charge of um, compiling all the information about not just heavy metals, but other toxins that uh, patients are exposed to, your patients are exposed to, and uh, the profiles, that's the profiles website. So there are monographs for each one of these. Um, much of the research that I'm presenting today came from the toxicological profiles from the ATSDR website for cadmium and arsenic. So for each one of these toxins, there are huge files looking at all the data in animals and humans in terms of the toxicological effects of these heavy metals that we're going to talk about today. Second one, exceedingly important, the Center for Disease Control is now measuring 212 chemicals in approximately 6,000 ambulatory human beings that live in this country every two to three years. And all that data is in this report. The reason that you want this report uh, uh, handy and accessible is because you are going to be able to use it looking at the non-provoked urine and blood levels of your patients and comparing them to the um, population that's been tested. And we're going to do some of that today. Um, environmental Health Perspectives is uh, your tax dollars at work. Environmental Health Perspectives is a journal that's published by the Center for Disease Control. Uh, much of the environmental research in the country that's done gets published in EHP. We have a seminal presentation this weekend by a hepatologist, Dr. Uh, Matthew Cave, uh, who is getting some work published in EHP looking at 27% uh, of the population which has elevated liver enzymes, which does not have alcoholic, al alcoholism, hepatitis, or drug abuse that is related directly to heavy metal and pesticide exposure. Um, you all know the kind of tsunami of um, uh, fatty liver in this country that we're all dealing with. Um, so Dr. Cave's work is just kind of uh, uh, the average work that's published in EHP. It's an excellent journal. Um, CHE, the Collaborative for Health and the Environment. How many people have heard about CHE? CHE, good. Um, CHE is something you uh, may all want to start belonging to because of their excellent educational system. It's uh, academic institutions, UCSF, Stanford, Harvard, um, that have come together to create a uh, database and an educational forum for physicians on environmental medicine. In this database, you can input a chemical or a disease, and you can see um, how they are cross-referenced. So it's a very helpful. I have it on my desktop. I use it all the time. And then if you want to become um, more depressed, then you'll actually be at the end of today, uh, this uh, pre-conference. You can always um, upload Environmental Health News every day. There are at least 40 or 50 articles that will come up on your desktop. Um, so uh, you can stay current on um, what's going on uh, worldwide in terms of environmental health. Okay, this is the ATSDR website. We're looking at the CERCLA priority list of hazardous substances. How many people have heard of CERCLA before? That's the Superfund sites. Remember when we actually used to have money to remediate Superfund sites? Um, most of the states in this country are now bankrupt and they don't have money to do Superfund uh, remediation anymore. But the CERCLA Act was actually the Superfund Act. And what the ATSDR um, list is, is uh, a compilation of the most hazardous substances in the country based on how often you find them in a Superfund site and how toxic they are. So what are we going to talk about today? Arsenic, which is number one, and cadmium, which is number seven. You'll see mercury is number three, lead is number two, and I don't think we can go all the way down to chromium, which might be number 17. I may not have done that, but chromium is also on this list as a heavy metal. And uh, again, this is a 275 substance list. You'll see heavy metals right up at the top in terms of their toxicity and how often you find them. And in fact, more than 50% of the time, you're going to see arsenic in Superfund sites. And 
just about 50% of the time you're going to see cadmium. So Superfund sites are not just in Missoula, Montana. There are uh, probably about 50 active Superfund sites in San Diego County right now. Um, this is a quote from Dr. Howard Hugh, who was the original editor of Environmental Health Perspectives. Um, the reason I uh, give people this quote is because when we're looking at chronic heavy metal exposure and retention, we don't always see acute presentations. Just like Dr. Biddle talked about, we very often see weakness or headache, um, chronic symptoms related to chronic metal toxicity, and this is the case in arsenic and cadmium as well. So unless you are really trained in uh, understanding how to diagnose chronic heavy metal toxicity, you wouldn't necessarily be able to catch it. The uh, levels that, are, that do cause uh, effects like hypertension and renal toxicity can also occur in individuals who are asymptomatic. So you also have to be aware of what, you know, what are you going to see in labs in your asymptomatic patients who may uh, be so used to feeling generally unwell that they're not going to complain to you of their chronic daily headaches or their fatigue or their brain fog or their um, anxiety or their depression. Um, the other thing we're finding out a lot about now is the genetic effect of uh, chronic uh, toxic metal exposure both in utero, placentally, um, in the fetus, and um, in the newborn, and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in terms of arsenic. Um, and my favorite quote from Dr. Hugh is, it is possible that low-level exposure contributes much more towards the causation of chronic disease and impaired functioning than previously thought. I'm going to show you some uh, medical article journals from Pier 1 uh, um, uh, journals that actually show you the relationship between chronic exposure and disease.